Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Gen 1 Coyote Training Part 8. In this training module, we're going to be breaking down how the Ford PCM logic operation is going to work, the flow of programming logic from our mass airflow sensor all the way down into our torque tables controlling the drive-by-wire system. We have to understand conceptually how this works in order to move in to do any calibration or tuning within our Gen 1 PCM. So let's jump in, let's take a look at how this is all going to work and get more familiar with how Ford has programmed our PCMs. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at understanding the programming logic going on in our Gen 1 Ford Coyote PCMs. Now this is a general overview of our programming logic, understanding how this all flows together we're gonna be looking and talking about a variety of different topics here in this tutorial. We're gonna to be breaking down individual topics in separate training tutorials, such as looking at spark timing or mass airflow tuning or speed density or variable cam mapping or torque table tuning. They're all gonna be covered in separate tutorials. This is just essentially putting all the pieces of the puzzle together here in one video and just going through how this flow of logic works. Um, we're not gonna get hung up on any individual topic here, but I wanna go and just cover this just in one continuous tutorial. And again, we're gonna break this down further. So if you're getting lost with something or something might be a little bit confusing, wait until you watch that actual tutorial on that topic. Things will probably make a little bit more sense. So essentially, I'm taking all the pieces of the puzzle, fitting them together here first, and then we're gonna break down each puzzle piece as we go through the training tutorial. So let's jump in here and let's talk about um, the fundamental underlining equation that we have to outline our fuel and airflow model in our Ford PCMs. We're going to start there and then we're going to work our way through some of the subsystems as we go through the tutorial. So we have this equation, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. That is the basic underlining equation that we have going on here that we have to satisfy in order to make sure the engine is going to run properly. Now let's break this down a little bit. I just talked about two terms, fuel mass and air mass. You may not be familiar with those terms. Let's talk about what they actually mean. Now, if we're talking about mass in general, mass of any substance is going to be the volume times the density. So I like to conceptually explain this so you can physically understand what I'm talking about here. If we have a glass or cup and it's empty and we would be able to calculate the volume of that cup. Now, if we fill that cup with water, we would know the density of water, we would know the volume of the cup, mass is volume times density, so therefore we would know the mass of the cup of water. Now if we're talking about um, gold, for example, we have that same cup, we have the volume of the cup that's known, and we fill that cup full of gold. Well, we would know the density of gold, and therefore we would be able to figure out what the mass of the cup of gold would be. And if we put the cup of water in one hand and the cup of gold in the other hand, they're gonna have two completely different physical characteristics that we can actually feel and see. So we know that there is going to be a difference in looking and talking about mass. Now understanding that and how that translates into fuel mass or air mass, let's kind of bring this back around here again. Let's start off with air mass. Air mass is going to be the volume of air entering the engine and the density of air entering the engine. Now why is this important? Well, if we know a given volume of air flowing into the engine, and let's say we're at sea level conditions, there's going to be a certain amount of oxygen molecules packed into that volume of air entering our engine. Now, if we have the engine running and we go up to, let's say, 10,000 feet of elevation from sea level, we'll have the same volume of air entering the engine. However, the oxygen molecules coming in that same volume of air are going to be drastically reduced. So we'll find volume of air times density we would have two different air masses at two different elevations. That's gonna be a problem if we're looking at fuel delivery, for example, if we're only accounting for the volume of airflow coming into the engine and we're not accounting for density, we're gonna find that we're either gonna under or over fuel the engine. So we have to always characterize and look at the air mass, the volume times the density. Another way to look at this, if we have the same volume of air entering the engine at let's say 20 degrees Fahrenheit of air temperature, we'll find that colder temperature has more oxygen molecules packed into the same volume of air. Now, if we look at the engine's operation with that same volume of air at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll find that there is a lot less oxygen molecules packed into the same volume of air, and therefore we have two different air masses, and we need to go and account for that and be able to deliver the fuel differently based on the intake air temperature. So elevation and air temperature are two factors that can uh, skew what the density of the air coming into the engine is going to be, and we need to account for that. So that's why we track air mass. Now, 
on the topic of air mass. We can measure the amount of air mass coming into our engine using a mass airflow sensor that's fitted to the intake or the inlet coming into the throttle or to the throttle body or to the engine. Now, the uh, looking up into the tables here in the Ford programming logic, we'll have a table that's going to be based on the math period as a digital signal coming in from the sensor depending on how much. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.